Welcome everyone. Uh, in the previous two videos, we have discussed the different definitions for the power gain of a simple uh, microwave amplifier. We said that we have three definitions: power gain, available power gain, and the transducer gain. And we have seen how to obtain these different gains in terms of the S parameters of the two port network, which represent uh, the transistor. Uh, now we are going to present a numerical example for calculating such uh, power gains for a real microwave transistor. So we say that we have a silicon bipolar junction transistor has the following scattering parameters at 1 gigahertz, and it should be noted that the S parameters of any transistor depends on the frequency, also depends on the biasing uh, condition of the transistor. So for each frequency and each biasing condition, we will have different uh, S parameters. So at 1 gigahertz with 50 ohm reference impedance, as we said, we are calculating the S parameters with respect to Z naught. So what is the value of Z naught? So the value of Z naught is here. Uh, the value uh, of Z naught here is uh, 50 ohms. Uh, for this transistor, the value of S11 is 0.38 with an angle minus 158 degrees S12 is 0.11 with angle 54 degrees S21 is 3.5 with an angle 80 degrees and S22 is 0.4 with an angle minus 43 degrees it should be noted here the value of S12 is usually very small value and for ideal case for unilateral uh, transistor the value of S12 should be zero this is for the case of unilateral but now it is not unilateral it is bilateral because S12 is not zero uh, also it should be noted that S21 it should be greater than unity because as long as S21 is greater than unity, it means that we have some amplification. If S21 equals unity or less than unity, this would mean there is no amplification in the circuit. And as we said, S11 and S22 of the transistor are not usually matched completely to the characteristic impedance. So it is required to find out the source impedance is 25 ohm and the load impedance is 40 ohm so we have a source and load impedance which are not matched to the reference impedance 50 ohm uh, it is required to compute the power gain the available power gain and the transducer gain at the beginning we should calculate uh, the reflection coefficient from the source and the reflection coefficient from the load so we have gamma source and gamma load Gamma source, it would be Z source minus Z node over Z source plus Z node. In a similar way, gamma load is Z load minus Z node over Z load plus Z node. Now, if I have the S parameters of the transistor and gamma source and gamma load, we can obtain a gamma input and gamma output. And from gamma input and gamma output and the S parameters and gamma source and gamma load, we can calculate the gain, the available gain, and the transducer gain. So, as we say, here are the inputs of the problem, the S parameters of the transistor, the input impedance of the source, and the input impedance of the load. From this, we are going to calculate gamma source. Gamma source, as I said, Z source minus Z node over Z source plus Z node. So it would be 25 minus 50 over 25 plus 50 would be minus 0.333. Or in other words, 0.33 with an angle by uh, 180 degrees. In a similar way, gamma load would be Z load minus Z node over Z load plus Z node. Z load is 40 ohms. So 40 minus 50 over 40 plus 50, it would be minus 0.111. Or in other words, it is 0.111 with an angle 180 degrees. Uh, from this, 
gamma source gamma load and the scattering parameters of the transistor we can calculate the input reflection coefficient and the output reflection coefficient of the two board network representing the transistor connected at the output with the load and connected at the input with the source so gamma input at the input of the transistor it would be s11 plus x12 s21 multiplied by gamma load over 1 minus s22 multiplied by gamma load should be noted that all these parameters are complex quantities with amplitude and phase so we are going to calculate them in terms of their amplitude and phase by calculating this we find out uh, gamma in is 0.365 with an angle minus 152 degrees in a similar way gamma output the reflection coefficient at the output of the transistor when the transistor is connected to the source with a source impedance 25 ohm it would be s22 plus s12 s21 gamma source over 1 minus s11 gamma source s22 here s12 s21 gamma source is 0.33 with an angle 180 degrees over 1 minus s11 multiplied by gamma source by calculating this we can find out the value of gamma output is 0.545 with an angle minus 43 degrees now we have prepared everything so we can calculate the value of the power gain the available gain and the transmission gain from the previous two videos we said that the power gain is s21 squared multiplied by 1 minus gamma root square over 1 minus gamma in square plus multiplied by 1 minus s22 gamma root square so the value the magnitude of s21 is 3.5 3.5 squared 1 minus gamma root square magnitude the magnitude here is 0.111 over 1 minus the magnitude of gamma n squared the magnitude of gamma n is 0.365 multiplied by the magnitude of 1 minus s22 gamma l here we are going to multiply s22 as a complex value magnitude and phase with gamma load as a complex value magnitude and phase and then we are going to take 1 minus this value and we are going to take the magnitude of this value and to square it. From this, we find out the, the power gain is 13.1. This is effectively the power at the load to the power at the input of the transistor. The power at the load to the power at the input of the transistor. On the other hand, the available gain is the power available from the network from the transistor to the power available from the source so in this case the load and the source are assumed to be matched to the transistor in this case the available gain is s21 squared multiplied by 1 minus gamma source squared over 1 minus s11 gamma source squared multiplied by 1 minus gamma output squared so S21 as a magnitude is 3.5 gamma source as a magnitude is 0.33 here we are going to multiply S11 as a complex quantity multiplied by gamma source as a complex quantity and take 1 minus S11 gamma source and take the magnitude squared multiplied by 1 minus the magnitude of gamma output squared the magnitude of gamma output is 0.33 5, 4, 5. The available gain in this case is found to be 19.8. On the other hand, the transducer gain. The transducer gain is the power at the load to the available power from the source. 
the power uh, the load to the available power from the source. In this case, the transducer gain is S21 squared multiplied by 1 minus gamma source squared multiplied by 1 minus gamma load squared over 1 ga minus gamma source gamma in squared multiplied by 1 minus uh, S22 gamma load squared. S21 as a magnitude is 3.5, gamma source as a magnitude is 0.33, gamma load as a magnitude is 0.11. Here we are going to multiply gamma source by gamma in. So 0.333 with an angle 180 degrees multiplied by 0.365 with an angle minus 152 degrees. After multiplying these term, two terms, we take one minus these two terms as a complex magnitude. Then the magnitude of this value is squared. Multiplied by 1 minus S22 gamma load. S22 is 0.4 with an angle minus 43. Gamma load is 0.111 with an angle 180 degrees. By calculating this, we find that the transducer gain, which is the power at the load to the available power from the source, is 12.6. From these results, we can find that the transducer gain is the minimum value. And the available gain is the maximum value. And in between, the power gain is between the transducer gain and the available gain. Actually, the available gain is the total gain when the source and the load are matched to the transistor. So in this case, it is the maximum power transfer from the source to the transistor and from the transistor to the load. So we can obtain the maximum gain of the available gain of the circuit. Uh, the power gain is the power when uh, when the source uh, when, uh, when when the load is matched to the source. Uh, sorry, when the load is matched to the transistor, but the transistor is not matched to the source. Uh, the transducer gain actually. Uh, is taking into consideration the mismatch between the source and the transistor and the mismatch between the source, the transistor and the load. So effectively, in practical case, the transducer gain is a practical quantity which should be taken into consideration. So the most useful gain definition for the amplifier design is the transducer bar gain, which account for both source and load mismatch. This was an example about calculating uh, the different power gains of a real transistor and from this example we can understand that the transducer gain is the practical value which we should design based on it all right by this end we have completed our discussion about uh, the power gain of uh, microwave transistor amplifiers uh, in the following video we are going to discuss Another quite important problem, which is the stability of the microwave uh, amplifier. So, what does it mean by stability? Uh, what are the conditions for the stability? This, we, that, uh, this, uh, what we are going to discuss in the following video. So, see you in the next video.